Yeah, so hi everyone, my name is Aida. Uh, I'm here with my co-founder, Henry, and uh, together we are building OK Contract. As Juan just mentioned, actually we need um, to improve developer tools and uh, accelerate um, onboarding to Web3. And this is exactly what OK Contract is building. Actually, we really try to uh, take out the pain of development, of, especially on client side, and um, create, uh, we have created a special technology, which we'll be um, discussing here. Okay, so, um, yeah, so basically, uh, the uh, transactional interfaces um, will play a major role in the blockchain technology adoption. And, but most of the time now we see that um, each project is building their own interface and there, there are not so many um, uh, applications that can embed um, any smart contract or um, uh, is really manually built today. So uh, we have seen a few projects like um, Uniswap, for instance, who manually implemented a couple widgets for their partners and distributed their smart contracts on uh, other websites. But um, traditional websites today really struggle to embed transactions. And um, why? Because, uh, why it happens? Because basically, um, front ends have to interact with smart contracts to execute smart uh, contract functions, read data, and listen to events and even like manage data upload for decentralized storage. So here we see uh, basically on the client side, website will need to um, communicate with wallet, with IPFS, with blockchain, and regular website really doesn't have all these capacities. Um, uh, so basically, um, we were thinking about this problem and um, uh, on the front end side, basically the purpose of um, uh, the front end is really simple and shouldn't be so complex. What we need is start with an intent of a transaction and uh, basically think about what users want to do. So typically we want to swap XA tokens for YB tokens. We want to, for instance, uh, stake them, those B tokens. Or we want to mint an NFT or buy the floor of an NFT collection or even upload uh, some data, like an image, to blockchain. So this shouldn't be so complex. But today, uh, the current projects are all taking the same approach, like building uh, from scratch, and it's very complex and time consuming. So I will pass uh, now the mic to Henry, who will explain our approach at OK Contract. Yeah, so hi, everybody. Uh, so just a bit about the, the solution that we are uh, taking in at uh, OK Contract. First, let me contrast with the way people develop dApps today. Usually when you develop the front end of your dApp, uh, it's a very long series of hundreds of lines of JavaScript code, uh, usually per method that you want to call, especially if you want to customize and make, uh, let's say, a well-thought, uh, detailed user experience in, in your application. So for instance, in the example that Ida mentioned, we have to take care about the user balances, we have to take care about events which come from the wallet, like chain changes, maybe address changes, if there are several addresses uh, which are managed by a given wallet. And all these details, in fact, add complexity in the transaction. And you go up to the stage where, for instance, if you look at Uniswap, which is a, a very good and very detailed uh, implementation of a front end, you have up to 500 lines of JavaScript code just to call one method of one contract. So there's a lot of burden that goes in that development. So we thought, we, we, we sat down and took a lot of time to see how we could do things better, uh, starting from the approach that Ida just mentioned about uh, doing intent-based specification. And basically, the approach we devised comes down to three things. 
And the first is how we specify the smart contract interaction. And I have a question for, for you. Do you think that JavaScript is a good specification of a transaction? No, good answer. <laughs> That's a good answer. Uh, because if you look at all this JavaScript code, the semantics, what you really want to do is completely lost. So what we want instead is to specify it better. And then we'd like to have maybe some Graal, which is the automated creation of the transactional interface from the specification that you have just written. And finally, and uh, to, to, to answer one of the questions that someone had uh, for Juan, is how do we reach a, a, a much wider audience for Web3? Uh, and that is by embedding these interfaces in many more websites, including the Web2 websites. So how we go from Web2 to Web3 to gain thousands, uh, millions, and maybe then next billions of users. So the first step, how we specify the contract interaction. So what we have created at the OK contract is a new language, a new programming language to specify the interaction, uh, which we call Lambda Script, and which is a purely functional language to specify what we would call a low-level intent of the transaction, or a high-level transaction, if you want, a high-level specification or a low-level intent. And by doing this, with this low-level intent, we obtain a program in Lambda Script, which we compile into bytecode, and then have the user inputs for that transaction run inside a VM, and then actually make the transaction. So it's kind of the, a new way, in fact, to specify an intermediary representation, which makes the job easier. And when we have that representation, then we can generate an interface for any transaction. Like, take this bytecode and immediately get an interface fully generated without writing it manually. And this is not just, you know, uh, a small drawings. All you can see here in the slides are actual screenshots of actual transactions on very different smart contracts because we cover from DeFi to NFTs uh, with... Uh, pretty nice, agreeable user interfaces, and they were made with zero lines of JavaScript code. Uh, oh, we wrote a, a JavaScript runtime once, but as a user, you don't need to have a single line of JavaScript code. And then when we have this, we can easily embed the transactional interfaces into any web page or web app. You take your website and you put that transaction right in, and all your users will be able to connect uh, to it with their wallets, and basically without uh, a single line of JavaScript code, this is an iframe, uh, and you don't need anything on your web page. A bit more details, so basically the widget interacts with the wallet, which connects with the blockchain, and the blo that blockchain, of course, uh, can be a VM, and as well connects to IPFS and custom OK contract nodes uh, which provide the relevant data to, uh, to, to make that transaction and which as well provide some web services which are required for a better user experience like having full text search when you need it, etc., etc. Some details about the way and the features that we have uh, with, uh, in respect to, to IPFS is that we use uh, for now one service called Lighthouse uh, which is another partner in the PL Filecoin ecosystem, which pins, in fact, to IPFS via Filecoin. And it does so directly from each of the user account. So basically, the, the, the good thing in that approach is it's not using our key. We are not building a centralized service for all our customers, which would be using our pinning service. Basically, each of the user is using their own pinning account, basically, and to, to, to pin in a decentralized way. And we also, of course, retrieve data from multiple getaways, including uh, D-Way and, and Cloudflare. Back to, back to Ida for a demo. Okay. 
So here, yeah, I'll just show um, basically a use case we did for um, a new site who wanted to allow his uh, reporters actually to um, upload some uh, images uh, that they see in real life to blockchain um, and then mint them as NFTs. So basically here we can just see um, a person who used um, exactly the uh, Lighthouse service, uploaded an image, and very quickly, yeah, I think it was very uh, quick demo. Actually, maybe I will start here to, to do some comments. So basically added some description um, uh, to this image and then uh, basically uh, signed with um, the wallet, the transaction, and uh, basically which allowed to uh, upload this image uh, with a description um, on uh, to IPFS using Lighthouse uh, service, and then uh, basically go and check it on, uh, for instance, li uh, site like Luxrare, and this, uh, see this NF uh, minted as an NFT um, in his portfolio. Yeah, so this is like really quick example. We have a few time left. So Henry, I pass it to you. Oh, no, we pass it to you. So we have uh, a couple of minutes for, for questions. So, yeah. So I, I repeat the questions uh, for everybody, including the, yeah, the people upstairs, uh, is why did we design a new programming language instead of reusing uh, an existing uh, functional programming language which would have uh, maybe similar uh, qualities? So I would say it uh, boils down mainly to the runtime. So uh, there are several adaptations uh, that uh, we, we, I am, uh, someone coming from the you know the OCaml uh, community, and uh, of course I would say my uh, first intent was uh, trying to, to use OCaml, uh, but then it turns out that uh, there's a, a lot of standard library uh, which needs to be adapted to the, the I would say the blockchain specificities, uh, and it's better to have uh, data such as the wallet addresses as first class values to have the, the a notion of contracts as first class values uh, because it allows a much simpler and easier uh, specification and, uh, and a much shorter code. So it boils down to it uh, instead of uh, using uh, records for everything because that would make it uh, more complex, in fact, for, for everybody, especially as we are designing as well a graphical uh, editor, which uh, makes it super easy to just input formulas a bit like uh, Excel formulas uh, in appearance, but of course uh, behind it, it's uh, Islam the script. But it will be, uh, so right now it's not yet released because we are still in, uh, in private uh, beta, but of course uh, the Lambda script uh, libraries will be open sourced and, and released uh, when they are finalized and when the specification is finalized. And we have time for 30 seconds maybe, one last question. Okay, perfect. End, end of the time slot. Thanks, everybody, and uh, happy to talk to you afterwards. Yeah. Thank you.